I noticed a lot of people waiting around flags this weekend. I thought I would wear the best one. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah, we, well, you kind of have to put that out as a disclaimer because right now, there's a lot of people that are afraid of this. I mean, I, 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 I keep seeing these you know, news reports and there are people and they're standing up there and God, he had a flag pole in his lawn. They had an American flag. That's a sign of danger. And I'm like, okay, when I wear this, it means I support capitalism, gun rights, free speech, freedom in general, and I don't know shit about geography. <laughs> All right, it, it, I, I don't know if, that, if that's frightening to people, but if you come up to me and you're like, you know, where's Oklahoma City? And I say, uh, North Virginia? If that's scary to you, Boogity boogie. <laughs> no. Scary dude here. But. <laughs> oh, wait. I just tossed this down here. I should have done that. These are my notes. Make notes so I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I'll probably sit on this later. Or not. But, uh, no, I mean, I like wearing this flag because, um, America. Now there's a difference, okay? And everybody in this country, if you if you were born here, if you legally immigrated, you're an American. But there's also Americans. Now, an American is just anybody who lives here. Americans are people who actually know how to put the old uh, cable spool in your back lawn and use that as a piece of furniture. How many people have one? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Oh, man. But no, America is for everybody. That's, that's the whole point. It's for everybody. They don't think so right now. That's the weird part, is that they're fighting over it. They're, they're taking America because it belongs. It belongs over here. It belongs to me and some of you. And I don't know why they do that. I, I, I really don't know what's going on, but it's confusing times right now. And, you know, you got white people. White people built a lot of the stuff that, like, a lot of this country. But then you have Latinos. They were here before white people. And then you have black people. And black people, they're saying they were the first species like on the planet. And then you have women, and women are like, men, you're just, you're done running things, patriarchy, and you know, sit down, it's a woman's turn. And then you have gay people, they're the underdogs. You have Christians, and the Christians are like, well, this nation was raised on, on our ideals. And then you have the atheists who think the Christians are in the dark ages. And they're all trying to fight with each other. There's a miracle mind, America, yours, America, this. Well, I'm Native American, so y'all can kiss my ass. <laughs> no, uh, uh, that's one of the things, is that uh, I am a um, gay person of Native American descent. And um, I don't mind when people wave flags around. It doesn't bother It's fine. You got a country, wave a flag cause, wave the flag, it's fine with me, it's good. But um, somebody's gonna have to explain to me the gay pride flag. Somebody's gonna have to do that because it's, it's, I know it's supposed to represent part of me, but I look at that, my, my brain cannot take that much information in at once. I'm looking at this thing and this, okay, I, gay people are supposed to have a sense of fashion, I thought we were accused of, right? And they're like, all right, guys, we're going to get together tonight. We're going to make a flag, okay? Eat this box of crayons and then puke. That's, which colors do we want? All of them. Every color in the world. But that was the old one. Now they have the new with the angles and the things. And, and I, they made those colors up. Those colors aren't real. You can put that color and you can put that flag. God can hold that flag and go, what the hell did you do? I didn't make this. All right, you guys made these colors. I didn't do this. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I used to know what it meant. Um, it used to mean some kind of, like, pride in your sexuality. I don't think it means that anymore, though. All it really means now... Waving that thing around, or they have it on their icons, or whatever it is. 
Oh, this guy's gonna go on Facebook and say a bunch of dumb shit. That's all it means now. But, uh, no, I mean, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't expect that I would, I didn't feel like I needed to come out of the closet for being proud of being an American. I, I've never really done a lot of, like, political stuff in my country because I didn't feel like I needed to come out with that. But now here we are, and I'm a centrist, by the way. I'm right in the middle. And uh, sometimes I get confused, because it's like I'm watching a football game. And we have one team and the other team. The other team doesn't like what, well, neither team likes what each other's doing. And you have this team, and they want to run off, riot, and burn down their own cities. They want to take all the dangerous, deadly drugs, and if two of them can like bother, you know, enough to get together, in, in enough for one of them to be pregnant, they instantly want to terminate that genetic, you know, continuing of them. Why does the other side have a problem with this? Why, you know, it, it's it's confusing enough. But if you could imagine a football game, right? It would be confusing enough if like these guys got the ball and started running toward their own goal. That's already confusing. What's more confusing is if the other team tries to tackle that bitch. <laughs> like, why are you stopping him? Let him go! But I'm just, I'm in the middle. I'm just watching this all from the center. So, uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes I get a little confused about that. I need that open. Why is that not open? Um, <laughs> So, um, there's that. This is, I guess you could call it, it would be a show. I don't know what really to call it. And then, if I was going to do a comedy show, there would be comedy in this show. So it would be a comedy show. A lot of people don't know what comedy is anymore. No, no, it's, I, I, I'm standing up here thinking like, you know, this is, is this a dead art? You know, a lot of people think the word joke, you know, you say the word joke, and they think it means that you want to say, specifically and on purpose, the most offensive possible thing you can say to the largest number of people possible, and you have the nerve to actually want to be released from all the consequences that comes from saying that thing, which is absolutely correct. Um, <laughs> no, that's, that's right on. That's, that's exactly what it is. But they don't want that now. So, so now you say something that's you know offensive or something like that. And, oh my God! Okay, you have said something that could be offensive to someone at some point in the past, now, or in the future. Therefore, you and your entire existence and everything you love must have a cactus enema. And um, you gotta bend over and take it. You know. Um, <laughs> You've said something that was horrible, and so your life must now be beaten by the woke dildo daily. <laughs> so commands the women who looks the view. <laughs> but, um, you know, you, no, that actually, you don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah there's rules to cover. Certain things that you got to know, you know, I mean, if people haven't seen this before, that's why. If um, you can actually laugh, it's okay. It's okay to laugh if you want to, because sitting down there, nobody knows you're laughing. And if I say something sick and you laugh at it, they're not gonna come after you, they're gonna beat the shit out of me. So I'm the one who's on the line. You guys can't laugh if you want to. Another thing is, um, remember, you are not the only person in the audience. Don't make that mistake. A lot of people, some people down there now, is to get the audience, they think it's a personal conversation between them and the comic, which is it's not always bad, unless you're Louis C.K. <laughs> <laughs> um, then, you're, then it's bad, but you don't have to do that because, you know, it, sometimes a comic will start insulting people. They'll insult a group of people, right? So you don't have to do this. You don't have to think that they're targeting your individual ass. If a comic says, well, if you like this thing, then you should run off and start an unlicensed hamster drag queen day here, sir. <laughs> now, you're not the only one in the audience. Remember that. 
Second thing, if you stand up and go, how dare you insult what I do with my life? Now everybody in the room is going to know you're a sick fuck. <laughs> so, so maybe don't do that. And that's rule number two. Rule number three, and oh, I have to do this because it's actually happened to me. <laughs> um, some people think that uh, comedy joke means official legal confession. <laughs> uh, you do not have to pick up your phone and dial 911. If they, they think that a comic has stepped up on stage and is there to present their most horrible legal offenses, uh, offenses to God and people who paid $13.50 to get in the room so they can start well off of a hooker's tits. This is not true. <laughs> Unless you're Louis C.K. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you don't have to do that. If, I, if, if you hear me say something like, I ate 12 babies yesterday, you don't have to dial 911. <laughs> you, can, you can chill and relax. Um, if I say anything that I did that would normally be illegal, I didn't actually do it as far as you know. <laughs> that right there. <laughs> um, I guess, uh, true story time, that, that actually did happen. <laughs> I was, uh, I used to perform with this old guy, his name was Uncle Kagan, and um, we were doing a charity auction. Now, well, it was an auction, it was a comedy show. And what happened was, they'd bring in, I think it was $15 you were charging, and we'd bring it in and they give it to the uh, charity, and then they get a little ticket. They could go in, and me and Kage would do improv comedy all night long. And uh, sometimes we go past midnight, you know? So we're in the middle of this thing, and he starts to tell a true story. This is something that really happened to him. He moved into this house. Right next door was um, this old couple. Been married a long time. He lived there for a bit. And... He went off to work one day, nobody knows why, the guy walked out of his house, walked into Kage's yard, got on Kage's porch, and shot himself in the face. <laughs> that actually happened, Kage got home, there's police, there's a dead guy, and I'm thinking, you know, and I'm, I'm sitting there, now I don't always have the best time, not always. And I'm sitting there thinking, how did this get so depressing? How did it get so morose? What happened to this? I shall fix this. And I turned to Kage and I said, what you should have done is to drag the dead body back over there, throw her in the porch and said, stop leaving your sex toys on my lawn. <laughs> Was it the best joke ever? Yes. No. No. But, <laughs> later at that convention, Two uniformed officers come up to me. Did you do anything with a dead body? And I could tell they didn't believe it, but they're, I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, well, we got a report that you, like, you know, you kind of defamed some defiled, you know, remains of a human being, like you were dragging him around the neighborhood. And I'm like, you know, why stop there? Why not be creative? Why not say, you know, that I was dressing up dead people in pink tutus, dragging them through the neighborhood in a red wagon so I could bring them to my backyard so we could have a fucking tea party. Why stop? <laughs> Let's just keep going with it. So, yeah, that had actually happened. Yeah. Oh, this water is like not there. I think it's you. <laughs> Damn, it's not alcohol. <laughs> so, now that that's all done, hello guys, welcome to Freak for All 2022. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I guess this is my office now, temporarily. Uh, if I was going to make a show, this would be uh, this would be my office. 
Um, oh, and uh, I actually got, um, there's a little map that uh, FFA staff put out, and it just showed all the states that people came from. So how many people out there, how, is this your first con? A lot of you guys, wow. That's me, well, if we, look, if you go home by the end of this weekend and you're not confused, we did not do our job. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. Um, <laughs> be careful, it is um, Oklahoma. I noticed that a lot of people from a lot of states have come here. Um, be very careful of the heat. Um, we know that's bad. And if you're walking around outside in a possum suit, be extremely careful of the heat and fall over. Oklahoma also, be, it's the weekend. It's Saturday. Uh, real showdown. <laughs> and uh, some people got the reference. Um, Oklahoma has this thing that it does on the weekends. It likes to combine beer with things that should not have beer. Like rednecks, <laughs> as an example. Now, if you run into a group of drunk rednecks, you'll probably be okay. You just you might wind up duct taping the back of a pickup truck doing donuts in the field somewhere. That's usually the fun part. Um, but if you if you run into a bunch of drunk rednecks and you're in that possum suit. Take extra lube and a bag of Doritos because you may not be coming back for a little while. <laughs> now, if you're in that possum suit and you run into a group of drunk possums, <laughs> they may worship you for a little while and then throw you in the nearest volcano. We don't know what possum. <laughs> Keep an eye on the weather, too, by the way. When we landed, um, tornado, like, hit and went uh, through broken arrow. Uh, so yeah, be careful of that. Keep your eye on the weather. Uh, because believe me, um, drunk tornadoes are complete asshats. <laughs> and if you're in that possum suit, the drunk tornado swirls up to you. Like, hey, hey, I know you. I ran into a tree, you guys, back then. And I spun them around and around until they were very dizzy. But also, they were dead. <laughs> you guys look so funny when your eyes are bulging out. Here, let me show you. And then it will pick you up and throw you into the next county. Because it's Merck. <laughs> so, uh, be careful of those. Uh, we, don't, we don't want people throwing around, by, being thrown around by tornadoes. Uh... I guess it's safe. I haven't fallen over dead yet, so. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Welcome to Oklahoma. Welcome to the show. It's my job now. We have, I'm very thankful we have the cancer school right here. Ah. Uh, We don't age well. Comics, we do not age well. We age like a fine old snakeman. <laughs> now it's, it, and you can see it happen too. If you actually go out and watch, you'll see the younger people. They'll come out here, and they'll grab the mic out of here, and, and they're <laughs> like, hey, I don't know how's it going? How are you doing? And they, they look like they're, you know, trying to jerk off a manticore without getting their head bitten off. <laughs> oh, it's because they're nervous, you know. They're nervous. <laughs> Big rookie mistake. Don't do this at first. You don't do that. Now, later, these first guys, you'll see at like, you know, a comedy club, well, actually a bar or something. Now you're going on a comedy club. So they're a little bit more relaxed. They're louder. And they're more confident, but their jokes suck. And they want to pick on the audience. That's what they want to do. They want to poke and say, hey, you, hey, guy, hey, good for you. It's good to see you. Yeah, let's, this guy, the nipples on this guy, rhino nipples, man, that's you. Rhino nipples right here. Hey, great to see you guys. Thanks for coming. Say, hey, any of you snort and blow off of the hooker's tits? And 
that's that. And then, eventually, they get old. And they're, they're moving toward the chair. They get old. And now, this is the age of truth. Because all they want to do is get paid. And then get off the stage and go to the bar. That's all I want. And I want to have my favorite drink, which is called a lot. <laughs> and they'll stand there, and they'll they'll just come right out with it. And they'll be like, "Hey guys, my armpits are getting fat. I didn't think that was possible. I picked the top layer of skin off the bottom of my feet sometimes." <laughs> I don't eat all of it. <laughs> Last time my body had told me I had to take a shit, I'd already punched half of it out in my underwear. How are you guys doing? <laughs> and then, then you have the cancel chair. And this is kind of new because people didn't start canceling people until what, a few years ago. So canceled comments are kind of new. So we're just going to come out here and we're going to sit down and go, the fuck do you want? <laughs> I mean, we're canceled. Honestly, I'm a little worried. Not for me, but for you guys. Because I'm already canceled. I, I can pretty much say whatever I want. What are they going to do? Cancel me again? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Whoops. No, it's, it's, you, you get the routine of being canceled. Yeah, it's like the first time you get slapped in the face with bull testicles. Oh, I know that routine. Great. It's like, you know, when you, when you get in that, that possum person, you get led up to that hotel room and it has a bunch of naked people with oiled up with whips, and then they bring in the donkey, and you're like, oh, I know this. I know what this is. It's kind of like that. A little bit like that. But, uh, I mean, I have to sit there and wonder, what do I talk about? Because... I can talk about being old. Boring, right? I can talk about being fat. I've got some of that. The only thing, I do have one thing to say about being fat. There, there, there's one thing. Nobody told me when I was, because I, I was one of those people that you hated, right? I was like, I'm 5'6, I'm I weighed 180 pounds, and my diet was pizza and ice cream. And I did not gain a pound ever. Now, here I am, and I've gained some weight. Nobody told me that when you get a little weight on you, it always feels like your shirts are hugging you. It's like a sense of emotional support. This is my emotional support shirt. I bring, no, I tried to bring it on a plane the other day. They made me rip it off. I couldn't. I, I had to go in naked. That was a fun flight. <laughs> I don't know, where was I? Now I'm trying to think of what I was doing. Um, okay. Oh, right. I think. I like it when that light comes on. It lights up my notes. Um, yeah, so, um, we, uh, we got the, hang on. No, I'm sorry, I forget my stuff. I didn't practice enough. That happens sometimes, too. Sometimes you, you get your show down, and then you go on stage, and you're like, wait, what was I talking about? You forget about it. Um, oh, well, I was talking about how we don't age well. That's true. Um, and I talked about that. Oh, kids. All right, because I am kids. So, oh, yeah, I remember where I was. Sorry about that. See, that's another thing when you get old and canceled, and, and you're a comic on stage, because when you're young, you're going to try to skip over it and tell a couple of little stupid jokes to fill up the time, but when you're old, you're like, what the hell was I talking about? <laughs> this is dead. But, um, no, I mean, I could talk about uh, getting fat. That's what it was. Um, I could talk about music. I love music. I like old music. Well, the older music I miss, I, and I miss a lot. And, but I kind of have a problem with it because all the things that they said in the older music, did we do any of it? I mean, did we really do it? We're not going to take it. Did anybody stop taking it? <laughs> I didn't stop taking it. Every time that song was over, I forgot about it. I just kept taking it. 
Did anybody ever come up to you and shake you all night long? Never happened to me. How many of you actually walked like an Egyptian? We got one person. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, did did you actually ever turn over and wake them up before you go go? Anybody? And uh, don't even. I mean, I don't even remember what it was like to be like a virgin. So that's way out. <laughs> no. Way. Oh, the last people I had sex with. They, they're on coins now. We. we <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, it's like, I don't think anybody pushed it. I didn't think anybody pushed it a little bit. I, I, I seriously doubt anybody pushed it real good. <laughs> don't think it happened. I, I, okay. I don't even think it's possible to pump up the jam. I don't think you can do that. I, I, do, I don't think it's possible to take the jam and put it up. I don't think. Did I, miss, did I miss the party? It would have had to have been something. It was somebody coming, running out of like some hillbilly village somewhere. <sighs> you gotta help me, man. You gotta help me tell everyone. Well, what's wrong with you? Oh, Jim Bob back there. <sighs> he took the jam and he he put it up. <laughs> nobody, nobody can put the jam up. Wait. <laughs> How did he put up the jam? <sighs> He pumped it. Fuck you. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you gotta have a parade now because somebody pumped up the jam, right? Oh, and, and a lot of times there were, yeah, there were old, um, like, cartoon, or sorry, cartoon, commercial jams. I miss those too. A lot of those, they're on YouTube, a lot of them. Okay. Um, don't worry, I'm not being sick. Sometimes my zipper falls down a little bit. I'm just checking. Okay, my dick ain't hanging. Okay, good. <laughs> no, I, I miss the old commercial jingles. You can find them on YouTube. And some of them, there's one. I, I love Dr. Pepper. Some people hate Dr. Pepper. Some people, how many Dr. Pepper? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah well, and you remember the song, right? No. I'm a pepper, you're a pepper, he's a pepper. Remember that, right? You can't do that song now. I'm a pepper, you're a pepper, he's a pepper, she's a pepper, them's a pepper, they're a pepper, she's a pepper, Z's a pepper, herself is a pepper, themself is a pepper. The thing would last an hour now. <laughs> you can't do that one anymore. So, I could talk about being canceled. Because of words. Cancel though. Uh, I'm pissed off. About being canceled. And a lot of people, you know, you see people on the internet, Twitter and Facebook, these trolls and like, you know, shit posters, and they're out there, I don't care about being canceled. They're just, I'm not here to impress them, doesn't matter. I don't care. I, I care. I care. Because you have to understand, I had this planned out, and they messed it up. I had it all planned out. Because, I mean, here I am, I've done comedy for 20 years. I'm not going to do this forever. I'm getting old. I've got to retire sometime. So I'm sitting there thinking, okay, what can I do or say on stage that will force them to throw me out? What can I do? Is there anything I can do? And these, these large venues that I performed for for 20 years, I wasn't going to leave them. I was going to make them terrified of me. I'm due to Randy Griffin. I'm not just going to wait. I'm not just going to walk up there and do some fight. America's Captain Carolard. Yes, I'm not going to do that. All right. So I'm like, okay, what can I do to make sure that any convention organizer would just shit their liver if they even hear my name? All right. That was the plan. That was the plan. And I went to my planning desk. I have one of those. And I went over there. You ever see Wiley Coyote drawing up some big doomsday device to shove up Bugs Bunny's ass? That's what that was me. And I'm planning out what am I gonna do when I when I want to retire. And I had a lot of good plans. Tons of them. They were awesome. And what I, one plan I had, I was gonna go and I was gonna take Dodo DNA and I was gonna reanimate the Dodo. 
I was going to bring it on stage live, and I was going to kill it. <laughs> right in front of everyone, put it on a rotisserie, you know? That'd make a good YouTube video, right? I had another one, I, I was going to... I was gonna take blood packs, like these fake blood packs, and put them under my shirt. And I was gonna go on stage and get halfway done with a comedy show. I was gonna fall down and do the magic of some puppetry. I was going to give birth to like a crack fetus. <laughs> and it was gonna wander over, dragging its umbilical cord to this like cardboard voting booth and vote for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> that piss everyone off, right? And so I'm thinking, okay, this is cool, and yeah, boy, it was close, too. I mean, maybe a couple, few years, I really felt like I had left before I was too tired, you know, too old to do this. And, um, but during that time, I was going to make good shows until I, you know, decided to drop the comedy bomb on my own face live in front of everybody. And then... Somebody stood up and said, you, you're canceled. But what? Excuse me? And a lot of people said, yes, you, to the radio company, you're canceled. You can't perform anymore. And I'm like, but I had plans. There were things I was going to do. How dare you? And I, I, I contacted all the people like involved in conventions. And I'm like, what is this with people? getting, you know, it's canceled and stuff. They're like, oh no, 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 no. And they, they, they shut down a block, all of them. And I'm like, okay. And instantly I thought, okay, did I get drunk at a convention and accidentally pull up Plan 36 and I don't remember it? I mean, because these people are acting like I actually did start a fire on stage by spinning a midget on top of another one long enough. That is possible. <laughs> But I don't remember doing anything wrong. And I tried to ask him, but they blocked me, I couldn't see it. And finally, somebody stood up and said, you're canceled because you are a Nazi. And I thought, shit, why didn't I think of that? That's not on my planning table anyway. That would have been so much easier than injecting Baby Yoda full of heroin wine until he passes out and taking his shit in his mouth. That would have been so much easier. Didn't think of it. Didn't think of it. And I'm like, well, but now I have questions. Serious questions. And I'm like, okay, wait, why am I a Nazi? Why, why is that? And they pulled up a bunch of screenshots of a tweet that I made um, saying that I didn't think that people should be beaten up for speaking. And I'm like, Okay, there's your point. And I'm like, what now? They're like, nope, that's it. Oh, really? Huh. And I thought, isn't, wasn't it hard to be a Nazi? I've never seen anybody be a Nazi by accident. I've never seen anybody walking down the sidewalk and they trip over a banana peel and they stand up, oh, I'm a Nazi now. Well, I've never seen that. And I, I mean, I'm picturing, it, that takes some effort, doesn't it? And I picture these two dudes, like in 19, you know, 40s German outfits, and they're standing around. Yeah, this is Mrs. Steinberg. She's very nice little lady. Said, well, uh, what? No, I don't want to hate her. I just, I, oh, I have to hate her now. Oh, we're going to hate on Mrs. Steinberg. So, okay, well, sorry, we hate you. Dieter's going to be very mad about this. Yeah, Dieter. He's the one that likes show music. But I have to hate him too? We're not going to make very many friends this way. And that's what, I, that's what I thought it was. I thought it was, you know, that kind of thing. But apparently not. Now, if you don't like pineapple on your pizza, I mean, I'm not a historical expert, but I mean, I remember, you know, the Nazis killing millions of people and taking over a lot of the world. All I've been doing is standing up and making an idiot out of myself and then going to the bar. <laughs> So, I don't know how I got that, but um, I have actually been elevated, though. I have been elevated. I am not just a Nazi anymore. As much honor as I get from being a Nazi, I'm something else now. Because, I don't know if this is 
private information. I hope not. I'm going to keep it as much private as I can. But um, somebody called to, uh, a hotel in Tulsa uh, about this convention, and they complained about me showing up to perform. And they said, apparently, he's worse than Hitler. <laughs> now, no, I'm okay with this because this secures my place in hell. <laughs> because when I wake up and I'm in hell, Con, I'm going to walk up right to the devil's throne and say, Bitch, get your ass out my chair. This is mine. <laughs> All right, shut off the fire and turn on the goddamn music where I'm going to party up again. That's, that's what I'm going to do. But, um, no, my, uh, oh, there, are you back? There she is. My mom's here. Hi, Mom. This is the first time, yeah, this is the first time ever in, in my entire career that she's actually come and watched me. And so I just want to make sure that I don't do anything embarrassing, you know, my mom there. That's why I'm going to talk a lot about my balls. Balls <laughs> <laughs> back there going, oh, shit. <laughs> um, no, I mean, we all have embarrassing moments. Some of you guys that, you know, came from, there's one person that I think came from Hawaii. Are you here? No. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that, no, I'm sure they came, but yeah, some came here from Hawaii. But uh, I've been to different countries and I've done, I've done some stupid things. Um, Australia. I know there's an Australian. There you are. There you are. Okay, you'll, you'll get this immediately. I was, um, I was in Australia. And I was in a hotel, and I'd run out of beer. This is a bad thing for my fans. And so I wanted to call down to the front desk to see if they have one of these little freezers that's got the beer in it, right? And I didn't know if they had one of those lines that you had to dial to get out, but usually in the United States you dial nine and it kind of connects you to the thing. So I dialed nine, nothing happened. I dialed nine again. <laughs> and then I just hit nine, 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 nine. <laughs> I didn't know that in Australia, like, 911 is actually 999. Nine, nine. <laughs> Hello, emergency, what do you need? I want another beer. <laughs> Germany was fun as well. Um, I actually went there and they have these wonderful, uh, interesting urinals uh, because they're, they're kind of higher off the ground and they, they're sort of stained with steel. And um, I, I, I go up to one and I'm, I'm like, well, this is like, you know, about here. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess they didn't put them on the floor. So when I, I took the leak and, you know, turned around and went to wash my hands, but there, there was no sink. And I'm like, wait. There's no sink. And I turned around and some dude walked in, walked over to the urinal, turned on the water and washed his hands because it wasn't a urine. <laughs> it was the sink. And I just... <laughs> that, was, uh, that was fun. When you get to learn German, well, Germany, when you get to learn German, it's language. That's, that's very interesting as well, because you learn they put words together a lot. Um, kindergarten. You guys know that word, right? Kinder. Child. Garden. Yard. Child yard. That's basically what I mean. So, I'm sitting there and I'm looking around, I'm starting to figure out Germany, German a little bit. And I see this word and it says, Kinderplatz. Now, I know what Platz means. That means place. Child place. And I walk, I follow the arrows, walk outside. There's a bunch of, you know, playground equipment. It's like, oh, child place. I got it. So I thought I was going to be funny. And uh, instead of looking for the toilet, I started looking for the Shiza plots. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm walking around and. Um, <laughs> Thorstein Scheiterplatz. And they look confused and a little bit, in, and, and then eventually they point me around. I did that like several times I went there. I'm asking for the Scheiserplatz. 
basically the shit place. Where, where, where's the shit place? <laughs> now, I was okay with that for a little while, and then I found out, because I talked to another German friend of mine, why people were giving me strange looks. They have that, they use that word. I didn't make that up, they use it. Scheiseplatz. Only it's not where you put the shit, it's where it comes from. <laughs> so I was walking around Germany asking people to find my asshole. <laughs> I'm basically saying, excuse me, where is the asshole of mine? That's why they were looking at me like that. They're like, oh my god, this guy does not know what the hell he's talking about. Oh, you know what? I didn't dig out my. I should have dug out my clock. I need that. I always like to keep an eye on the time. Oh. Thursday morning when no one was here. Look, there's nobody in FFA. sexual assault against him. And I'm like, this guy seems kind of interesting to me. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to meet this guy. So he was uh, invited to a fur con. And now, he'd already heard about me. I didn't know about this, but he you know, read that I was on there, and what's this? And he actually asked people, who's this to the Randy Earth guy? I mean, he's, I think I'm, I might have been a guest of honor at that convention. I don't remember. But they were like, okay, here's, here's to the Randy Earth he, listen, he rants, he, he says a lot of, of horrible things that don't ever piss him off. That's what they said to him. Now, this guy is starting to think that there's a furry mafia <laughs> and that I am the boss. <laughs> so he wanders in, he goes to the con, and um, he goes, to, sits down at this table. He's having a, a little bit of lunch there. I haven't seen him all weekend, by the way, because this dude, most of the time when you you get, uh, you know, 
guess why are they coming to a fur con and they're all like, mm, okay, whatever is it? And then they need to wander off and have six months of therapy to get over what they've seen at the convention. This guy, uh, no, he, he came in, saw the furries, saw lots of beers, and went party! And he ran in and he was just there all weekend. He was even hiding from the staff. <laughs> he was like hiding from the staff behind, you know, furries so that he could continue to party. And now it's Sunday, hadn't seen this guy yet. He's apparently downstairs at a table in the restaurant, and um, he's having some lunch. So I had a, a companion up there, it was a friend of mine. I said, okay, here's what you do. Go down to Jeff Good and tell him that I'd like to see him. And I'd like to see him in my room if that's okay, because I like to talk to him. And now, see, here I am, I, I'm in the mirror, and I'm doing some Godfather stuff, because I'm going to offer this guy a beer, you know, I'm going to say, hey, you know, chill out with me for a little while, drink a beer, talk with the guy, right? I'm in the mirror, you know, hey, I got an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> I, I got an offer you can't can refuse. And I'm practicing, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, you know, you have a beer. I'm going to offer you this beer. Just sit down and have fun. So my friend goes down there, and he sits down at the table, and he says, Two wants to see you in this room. Jeff Good is now getting worried. <laughs> He's getting a little afraid because he thinks I'm some kind of furry mob boss and I just asked him to my room. He starts moving his, you know, they all start moving their chair back like, the, you know, like there's some kind of, you know, mark on them now. And um, so eventually he does, he, he comes up to the room and he knocks on my door. And I open it, there he is, and he's standing there looking very nervous. He says, um, you, you wanted to see me, sir? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, come on in, have a seat. He comes in, he sits down, and I turn to him and I go, I'm gonna make you an offer. You can't refuse. <laughs> Bad timing, people do not know why Jeff Good was jumping out my window that night. <laughs> But that's what honestly happened. I do not know uh, how late is it? I'm checking the time. Wanna be at? We got two minutes, right? Can I duck out two minutes early? <laughs> Martin, you wanna come up here and say something or not? No. Huh? Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something else to talk about. I want to do the toaster one, but I can't remember. Great job. The what? Oh, great giraffe. I, I should have brought my little, uh, my little collar here. Because apparently, we have to talk about great giraffe. Do you know who great giraffe is? Do you know? Great. Neither do I, because you can't see your face. It's all the way up there in the sky, but she gives us come down once. And they fall down from her face onto the earth, where she grows all of her shits. Notice the fields are buried. And that is where we find out what Great Giraffe wants us to do. Now, what do you think? Here's the thing about Great Giraffe. I always make this up with you guys. I don't know if you've ever seen, if you've ever been in the middle of a Great Giraffe, but we got to make this up together. Right? So, bloody old lip, that great giraffe wants us to do. What do you think? What is commandment number one for this weekend? Good time. Good time. Maybe. Possibly. Have sex. Is that in there? Drink beer. Okay, well, where am I? No, I just look, I just gave you guys a commandment from a giraffe that you can make up, and I said have sex, and nobody said yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> it's the first time I've ever yelled sex at a furry con and everybody's like, mm. <laughs> Giraffe likes booze. She also likes pizza. She 
She likes the pizza with, um, she doesn't like pineapples on the pizza. The reason why is because I'm making that part up. <laughs> pineapple does not belong anywhere near pizza. How many people like pineapple on pizza? Yeah. About half of you. It's always, a, it's always about half. Oh, man. So what is law number two? From Great Giraffe. Become uncancelable? You know what? I kind of disagree with that. I kind of disagree with that. I think everybody should just get freaking canceled. <laughs> cancel it. Cancel all of us. Hey, if you get, if you uncancel yourself, that means they can try to cancel you again. Once you cancel, can't do it again, right? Cancel everybody. So, well, if you've registered to be here, you're already canceled. You guys know that, right? <laughs> We're all canceled. I'm double canceled now if there is such a thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally I'm canceled. Third, third rule of great Jamal. What, what is the third law of great Jamal? Three can be What is it? Three can be what? Married. Three people can be married? <laughs> we ain't in Utah, buddy. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, I'm sure for this weekend that will happen for us because Great Giraffe is a very kind guy. She's a very giraffe guy. And um, if I was going to make a comedy show, might have said something like that, but I'm very sorry. I didn't have any comedy material tonight. I just wanted to stand up here and talk to you. Hope you guys had a lot of fun. Um, I came in, I thought, did my best, and now I'm going to go to the bar because I'm American. <laughs> Yeah, that would help.